All right, guys, in this video, I am going to be going through page four of your study guide. So starting with problem number 18 here, we have a chemical mixture problem. So I'm going to draw my little buckets, whatever you want to call these things. All right, she wants to make, uh, do, 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 okay. So she is combining two things to create something here. She wants to make a 47% solution. She has already poured three liters of a 15% solution. Sorry about the little update thing there. Uh, so, okay, so 47% is what she wants. Three liters of 15%. How many liters of a 55% salt solution must she add to create the desired mixture? So I don't know how many that is. So all of these percentages are in terms of salt. And then our quantity here, we're starting with three liters. We're gonna add X liters, so three plus X. Uh, again, for me, I like doing this organization because now the equation is gonna fall right out. This is gonna be 15 times three plus 55 X is equal to 47 times three plus X. So let's see, 15 times three makes 45 plus 55 X equals, uh, 47 times three is not gonna happen in my head. So that's 141 plus 47x. I'm going to subtract 45. I'm going to subtract 47x. So 55 minus 47 gets me 8x. And 141 minus 45 gets me 96. Dividing by 8 gets me an even answer of 12. This whole thing was in liters. So make sure you give your answer unit. All right, so 12 liters there for number 18. All right, I'm gonna slide on up to number 19 here. Another chemical mixture problem. So let's see, he has 20 cups of a cocoa mixture. He's going to pour out some of that and replace it to create a cocoa mixture. Okay, so 20 cups of a 35% solution. How much should be poured out? Well, what he pours out is also 35%. And the answer is, I don't know how much should be poured out. If I do replacement though, that's gonna be the same quantity. Pure cocoa is 100% cocoa to create a 68% cocoa mixture. And quantity wise, I've got 20 minus X plus X this replacement here means that you're going to end up with the exact same quantity that you started with. So now if I go ahead and start writing out my equation here, I'm going to have 35 times 20 minus 35 X plus 100 X equals 68 times 20. So let's see 35 times 20. I feel like that's 700. Okay. I did it was right. So 700 minus, actually I'm gonna go ahead and combine these two terms. So 100 minus 35, so positive 65X equals, let's see, 68 times 20, 1360. If I subtract 700 from that, that gets me 65X is equal to 660, dividing by 65, and I get a lovely decimal. Um, the directions don't say anything particular. Uh, I think I've talked to you guys in class, I just rounded two decimal places unless told otherwise. So I'm gonna go with 10.15, this is cups. All right, so please again, make sure that your answers have units in them, okay? So that's number 19. Sliding on down to number 20, we're gonna move into the border questions. All right, so we're gonna to need to read it, annotate it, turn it into equation and solve it. All right, eight foot walking path surrounds a rectangular field. All right, so here's my rectangular field. I'm gonna give it an eight foot walking path. So eight, 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 and eight. The length of the field is 100 feet longer than the width. So how wide is it? I don't know. How long is it? The same width plus 100, okay? If the area of the walking path is 4416, so I'm gonna make a little area here, 4416. Don't write eight, there's 16, okay. 
So outside dimensions now. I want to get these outside pieces so I can eventually talk about area for the big rectangle. Um, so let's see, this vertical edge is going to be my X here plus the eights for the width. So I'm feeling that's going to be X plus 16. Okay. And then this horizontal edge here is going to be the X plus 100 plus eight plus another eight. So X plus 116. Oh, these are going to be some fun numbers to work with. All right. So the area of the big rectangle x plus 16 times x plus 116 is equal to the area of the little rectangle plus the area of the border. All right, so this is going to require just a little bit of multiplication here. So let's go x squared plus 116x plus 16x plus what is 116 times 16. That is 18 56 equals x squared plus 100x plus 4,416. Immediately, I'm going to get rid of my x squareds because they are going to cancel each other out. I'm going to combine these two x's and subtract the 100 to get it to the other side. And then I'm going to take my four, uh, 4,416 and subtract 1856. So 116 plus 16 minus 100 is 32x. And then 4416 minus 1856 is 2560. Dividing by 32 gets me a nice even x equals 80. Now you're not done here because my question was, what are the dimensions of the field? So the field, that was my rectangular field, is this inside area here, inside piece. So if x is 80, we've got 80 here, and then x plus 100, so 80 plus 100. So my final answer here should be 80 feet by 180 feet. Those are the dimensions, okay? All right, and that takes care of problem number 20. All right, last one on here, we need to do problem number 21. It is another um, border word problem. Let me slide that up. Okay, we have a rectangular Zen garden. Zen sounds good right now. Uh, we're gonna put a walkway of uniform width around it. Picture not drawn to scale, but close enough. All right, if the dimensions of the garden are 20 feet by 12 feet, so let's go 20 by 12. And the area of the walkway area here is to be 420. How wide should the walkway be? So I don't know how wide it's supposed to be. So we're going to throw X's around the sides, right, around those edges for the border. And then I need to get some outside dimensions here. So this edge here would be 20 plus 2X's or 2X plus 20. Order won't matter in this case. And then this vertical edge here is going to be 12 plus 2x's, so 12 plus 2x. And I tend to fall into the same patterns for all of these problems in terms of setting up the equations. So the area of the big rectangle, so 20 plus 2x equals the area of the little rectangle, so 20 times 12, plus the area of the border, which was given to you as 420. All right, let's see what we got here. 12 times 20 is 240. 12 times 2 makes 24x. 2x times 20 makes 40x. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Uh, that was 240 plus 420. All right, uh, this one, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get rid of the x squareds. So I want to pull literally every term to the left side and put it in standard form. So that means I'm going to move the x squared first. I'm going to combine the two x terms, and I'm going to pull all of the constants over. So 240 minus 240 minus 420 so that I get this whole thing equal to 0. So 4x squared plus, what is that, 64x, sounds good, minus 420 equals 0. Uh, conveniently, everything here is divisible by 4. That is a nice thing. So if I divide everything by 4, that's going to get me x squared, 16x minus, what on earth is 420 divided by 4? That is 105. 
equal zero. Uh, I'm going to guess that this is factorable because when I made the problems, they were all factorable. Uh, so things that multiply to five, uh, sorry, 105. Uh, let me make a little list off to the side here. So obviously one times 105, two is not going to work. What's 105 divided by three? Three and 35 is not going to go anywhere for a 16. 105 divided by four is not going to work. Divide by five, five and 21. Ooh, that one is a promising one. So if I make positive 21 and negative five, I like it. That's going to get me x equals negative 21 and positive 5. How wide should the walkway be? That walkway should be not negative 21, but how about a positive 5 feet? All right, so that takes care of problem number 21, which is the end of page 4. Um, and hopefully you got some understanding of how to do those four word problems.